Hi, beautiful. You look just as beautiful as last time I saw you, or maybe even more. Who knew that was possible? I didn't. After years of being a hairdresser, I've noticed one major thing. Most people have no idea what their hair type actually is. Is my hair thick? Is my hair thin? Is it fine? Is it coarse? Is it curly? Is it straight? Nobody has any clue. People with fine hair are notorious for saying that their hair is thin. It's not thin, it's fine. Those are two different things. Today, we're gonna review things down to the nitty gritty details. We're gonna figure out what your scalp type is. Is it oily, dry, normal? Do you have high density or low density? Is your hair thick or thin? Is your hair actually damaged or is it actually healthy? And also, what type of wave pattern you actually have. We'll go through everything from straight hair to the curly of them all and everything in between. Now, this will help you a lot when figuring out what products are necessary for you and what shampoos and conditioners should you buy. And also, it's just interesting to know what your hair type is. That way we can all just figure it out once and for all and be done with it and make me happy, okay? If you wanna figure out what your hair type actually is, then let's do it. Let's get started. First category is scalp type. Hmm, maybe it's something you never thought about before. Actually, probably most of you guys have thought about it, but I wanna review it because people get confused if their scalp is oily or is it dry, or is it just normal? So let's review oily. Typically people with oily scalps, if you wash your hair in the morning and by midday or by nighttime, your hair is getting piecey and there's clearly a bit of oil on your hair strand, typically means your hair is on the oily side. In combination with that, if you look at your scalp and by the end of the day after washing your head, it is really shiny you can actually feel oil on your scalp means your hair is oily for sure 100% and if you have both combined girl you probably got an extra extra oily scalp and you probably have an imbalance with something or you're stripping your hair way too often with shampoo now let's move on to dry scalps dry scalps uh well they look like the Sahara Desert but besides that you usually got some tumbleweeds going across your scalp you know because it's a desert <laughs> comedy, you know, not my best thing. Typically dry scalps are sensitive and prone to irritation. Sometimes you also experience what is considered dandruff or dry scalp. Dandruff is not the only thing that affects dry scalp. There is other things. So I'm not a doctor. I don't want to inform you on that. But if you have uh, little pieces of white skin sprinkled around your hair, you probably have some sort of dry scalp condition. Your scalp is dry. It can also be itchy and you can also feel a lot of tension on your scalp. Like it's tight, like you need to rip it open and, you know, stretch it out. Um, it feels tight, your head's dry. And now we have normal scalps. Anybody with a normal scalp will not get a buildup of excess oils on their scalp and their hair strands by the end of the day after washing their hair in the morning. And if you don't notice any dry skin or flaky skin on your scalp, or your head doesn't have any tension, you know, so on and so forth, everything we just reviewed, if you don't have any of those symptoms, you probably have a normal scalp, which is great. It's the only time I like being normal is with my scalp. That was the easy bit, okay? Now we're gonna get on to things that are a little more, you know, you gotta think a little bit to comprehend, okay? Should be simple though. Now we're moving on to hair thickness and hair density. This is one that makes me so annoyed the most. It's when people confuse the two of these or just pretend they're both the same thing because it's not, they're actually two different things, not one singular thing, so get it right. Hair thickness is describing the actual thickness of an individual piece of hair on your head. So if you pulled that hair out of your head and you looked at it, is it thick or thin? Then we have hair density and that describes describes, you know, how big your damn ponytail is. When you pull your hair into a ponytail, is it large? Is it small? That's describing how many strands of hair you have on your head. Those are the two big things that I want you to remember. Hair thickness and hair density, because that's the one that people get so hung up on and confused about and like, look, no, I don't get it. We'll get it. So thick or thin, you ask? What hair type do you have? Is it thick or is it thin? I know what mine is. <laughs> Thick, baby. Now, to measure hair thickness, if you have a piece of sewing thread, I'd recommend grabbing that. Grab a piece of thread, pluck out a piece of your hair, and compare the two side by side. The hair is naturally a little bit more consistent back here and a little bit thinner up here, so pluck from back here. If your hair is just as wide as the sewing thread or slightly thinner, that usually means you have thick hair. That's right, you have thick hair. And of course, if your hair is much thinner than the thread you have, Thin hair. If you don't have a thread around, you can also take the hair strand, run it through your fingers like this. And if you can feel the hair, very much so, uh, it usually means you have thick hair. If you can't feel it, you kind of just like rub along it. And if you don't look at it while you do it, you're like, oh, am I touching the hair or not? Yeah, thin hair. Now we're moving on to high or low density. It's 
Check the density of your hair. Pull your damn hair back into a ponytail. Check the circumference. Circumference is the measurement around an area. If you have low density hair, your circumference of your ponytail will be less than two inches. Medium density will be two or three inches. And high density is four or more inches in circumference. Another way to figure this out if you can't pull your hair into a ponytail or if you don't have a tape measure, well, you can look at your hair in the mirror. If you can see your scalp without moving your hair around with your hands, you can just look down and see your damn scalp. Well, that probably means you have low density hair. And if you can't see your scalp, if that is covered up, honey, like camo in the forest, you got high density. Congrats. I'm jealous. I got low density, baby. Actually, uh, my doctor told me I had low density hair, so it wasn't a fun doctor visit, you know? I actually kind of had a heart attack, so we work with what we got. Next, we're going to learn if your hair is damaged or healthy. People all the time are like, dude, my hair is so damaged and dry. And I'm like, where? There's not one split end on your hair. Not one. So let me give you a few little pieces of criteria that describes damaged hair. And let me try and help you figure out if you actually have damaged hair or you just think you do. Because people often get that confused. If your hair tangles easily, girl, it's damaged. Yeah, no, if you can't run your hands through it at all times, typically your hair is dry slash damaged. If your hair, you know, is just not growing, um, some people actually just can't grow very long hair naturally. But if your hair <laughs> definitely has those ends that look a little compromised, along with it not growing, your hair is damaged. If you look down at your ends, if you can see them, if your hair is long enough and you're like, look at them and you're like, Pfft. There's so many split ends. Like it looks tragic. It looks so scary. Damaged hair. If you pull a piece of your hair and you stretch it out like this, if it stretches, your hair is damaged. If your hair just snaps, your hair is healthy. Congratulations. If your hair doesn't dry for like literally 10 hours and it's not, you know, very high density, if your hair is just medium or low density and it takes hours and 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 hours to dry, your hair is damaged because it's grasping onto that moisture because it has no natural moisture. So it needs to grab onto that moisture and hold it for as long as possible. Your hair is damaged. And if it doesn't take that long to dry, it's not damaged. If when you brush your hair, you're getting clumps of hair coming out or you're getting just maybe more than like 10, 15 strands your hair is probably damaged. And if you're getting less than that, your hair is not damaged. It's so healthy. Wow, good job. Is your hair shiny? Do you look like a well-groomed pony? If it's shiny, your hair is healthy. If it's not, you either need to wash it or your hair is damaged. It's damaged, okay? We're on to curl pattern now, guys. Okay, so curl pattern, it's a touchy subject. <laughs> if you don't get this right, some people get mad at you. 99.99999999% of people have a curl pattern, okay? It's very rare that your hair is skin straight. If your hair air dries and there's any like sort of bevel, like literally this much, you have wavy hair. Pretty much everybody has wavy hair. You don't really come across anybody with pin straight hair naturally. So there's three sort of subcategories. There's wavy, there's curly, and there's coily. Wavy being the least curly and coily being the most. That didn't really make sense, but you get it. We're gonna begin with 2A. This is the least wavy of them all. You just have that slight little Oop, bend that little cool, 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 but not like tight. I have 2A. You got just a little bit of texture. 2B, then we're getting into the actual, your hair is actually wavy. You have some wave pattern, okay? It's just a tiny bit more than 2A. What a weird coincidence. 2C, your hair is wavy like this, and they're tight. They're like, there's a lot of them, girl. 3A, which is just the classic curl. It's like you took a curling iron, but not really. It's a more lived in natural look. Just imagine like a curling iron curl. 2B, you have those spiral curls everywhere. They're like, and they're much smaller than the um, previous 2A. They're more defined, they're curlier. 3C. Oh, now you got the corkscrews. When you pull your hair down, your hair expands a lot. It goes back up. The curls are even tighter than 2B. You get the point. Little sections, all curly all over the place. Beautiful. Now we get into level four, you guys. This is the coily hair, okay? This is a little bit more of an irregular wave mixed with an irregular curl. It's a tighter, curlier, wavier sort of hair. Basically take 2C and 3C and mix them both together and now we got 4A. That is just a slightly coiled look and definitely when you pull it out, it bounces back, okay? And it's much longer when you pull it out. Now we have 4B, which is very simple. You guys, I'm not gonna go into this too far. Um, you just have a little bit of a tighter coil than 4A. 4B is just a little bit tighter. We're getting a little bit more into an afro at this point, you know? And then we have the curliest of them all, of all the lands, which is 4C hair. It's magic. It is very voluminous, very coily, very kinky, and very beautiful. So those are all the different types of hair you can have and scalps, everything <laughs> under the sun. I mean, you guys, you wanna know what mine is? I have a normal scalp, no dryness, 
no irregularities. It gets oily, you know, not too fast, not too slow. I have low density hair. I don't have a ton of it. Girl, the older I get, the more it's going away. I'll miss ya. Bye. I'll see you later. I also have thin hair. My individual hair strand is on the thinner side. It is much thinner than a piece of sewing thread. I would consider my hair healthy right now. I don't color it, so it's quite healthy. And it's always shiny when I wash it and very soft and supple and, you know, just all that good stuff. And my curl pattern is 2A. As you can see, this is pretty much how it dries naturally. The tiniest little like bend, just like a bevel. It's quite straight though. That is my hair type all laid out for you. I hope you guys can figure out yours. Now I told you guys in the beginning of this video, I wanted to help you discover what types of products would be best for your hair. And of course I am gonna recommend my own products because I formulated them, I know what's in them, and I know the ingredients are fabulous and amazing and can do wonders for your hair. And if you're not interested in buying my products for whatever reason, um, maybe this will help you discover what products would be good for you um, elsewhere on the market. Let's get into it. Okay, first we'll begin with Salty. Salty is an amazing sea salt spray. Oh, what a name, huh? Um, Salty is gonna be great for pretty much everybody, but if we are gonna get really specific here, anybody from 2A to 4 C hair can use this. I do really prefer this for anybody with 2A to 3C hair, okay? Just a little bit more on the wavy side. Maybe not people with damaged hair, but people with more normal hair that hasn't been too processed or is totally falling off their head because sea salt can be a little bit more drying. This will give you those amazing and beautifully defined soft beach waves and it'll give you that like tousled sexy style. Electrified volumizing foam, great for people with low density hair. Can't stress that enough. And for people with thin hair. If you wanna expand your hair fibers, this actually does do that. It actually like swells it a little bit. Um, it also gives you amazing heights and amazing holds. So great for those of you with that kind of hair type. Also, this doesn't matter if you have, you know, 4C hair or 2A hair, it works for everybody. Force field heat shield. I'm gonna say this one is just for everybody, you guys. Everybody needs a great heat protectant. This one protects up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It also includes pro vitamin B5. So people with damaged hair can actually gain a lot from this. Um, it actually protects your hair from future damage and heals your current damage. Hydromatic conditioning mist. This is great for everybody, but I will say, great for those of you with drier hair. It doesn't matter how thick or thin your hair is or if your hair is low density or high density, doesn't matter. That doesn't make a difference, but if your hair is dry, your hair is damaged, super great. Or if your hair just gets really tangly after the shower, super great for untangling and just smoothing your hair out. We have Viper next. Smoothing oil. Anybody with anything in the 4A, 4B, 4C category, I love a good oil. We included the best of the best oils in this. Smells so sickening. It actually dries into your hair and doesn't keep your hair looking greasy. You also have that bouncy curl. It won't be weighed down. Um, and also anybody with damaged hair, please use an oil. BDSM Slick and Define Balm. Oh, anybody, okay, with curly hair, please, you need this. I know this is something that's kind of like weird, you know, like what do I really need a Slick and Define Balm for? Girl, just read the reviews. Everybody who's gotten it is like, why haven't I had this before? It hydrates, it adds a lot of shine, and it defines your curl. So if you have 4C hair, it's gonna really define your fabulous coily hair. Anybody who has 3A, 3B, or 3C hair, it's going to do a great job at defining your curl. Let's put a little on your finger twirl it around, you know, get on the ends and it'll perfectly define your waves without weighing it down and without making it greasy and without making it crunchy. This also doesn't matter if you have low, high density or anything in between. Club Kit Dry Shampoo. Oh, my low density girls out there are guys. Dry shampoo is your friend. It's your best friend, actually. It makes your hair look so much thicker. Mine actually doesn't make your hair gritty either. It actually makes it really soft, so you can use it on your clean hair and you'll still feel clean and refreshed, but you'll have extra volume because that powder is living in there, adding that extra height. If you have a dry scalp though, maybe don't use a uh, dry shampoo. Because it is powder, it can make your head drier because it's sucking in all those oils. Also, anybody with oily hair, who you guys know, dry shampoo is your bestie too. And powder does a way better job than aerosols. In my opinion, just you need to brush it through. Prismatic Glow Hydrating Mask, you guys. If you have dry hair, f Get it, girl. Damaged dry hair, please use a mask. I can't stress that enough. This says argan and bubba oil. It'll really hydrate really nicely and make your hair so smooth and silky and soft. Don't use this if your hair is low density and healthy because it'll just weigh it down. So that's not what you need. Electric Rain Moisture Cream. Now this, I feel like is a one size fits all kind of a product, but if we're gonna really try and narrow it down a little bit more, well, I can't. It is light enough to use on somebody with the finest of hair, also heavy enough to use on somebody who has 4C hair, okay? 
and needs a lot of hydration. It is buildable, so you can apply less and get less hydration and apply more and get more hydration. But all my products really dry into the hair and don't leave a greasy film on top because they are very high quality products. So you're gonna get amazing protein benefits and oils and all these great ingredients to make your hair super healthy and feel nice and look shiny and luxurious. Glitterati is like a, your fun accessory. It's like your fun handbag, right? It's just the stuff that just makes you feel extra and fabulous, just like I do every time I film a video. Honestly, great for any wave pattern. This is going to define your wave a bit. It's gonna add glitter and hydration without that heavy, sticky feel. It's also great for a blow dry styling. So if you have finer hair and you wanna get some really nice bouncy curls and you want to last you a long time, your best friend, and of course, it has a lot of sparkle which is why it's called Glitterati. So if you wanna have some fun and style your hair at the same time, Glitterati. Next we have WaveTech Wave Foam. Another one size fits all, to be honest with you. It is heavy enough to use on 4C hair, but light enough to use on 2A hair. I know that makes no sense, but when you touch it, you'll know what I mean, because it is a foam, but it is buildable. And it's just a really sick product. So if you have 2A hair, it'll make your hair a little bit wavier. It'll define your wave a little bit more. It won't add any crunch. It'll also defrizz your hair. It'll add pro vitamin B5 to your hair. I've had a lot of people before see hair use this product and see amazing results. It makes your hair so light and bouncy. There's no sort of crunchy feeling and it really defines your coily pattern. This won't matter if you have thick or thin hair or lower or high density, it'll work for everybody. I do have to say one thing though, guys, I'm sorry, but this product is sold out. We're working to get more in stock in about a month. It's coming very soon. We are working very hard over here to make that happen. So if you guys would like to sign up for our email list to be notified when this product is restocked, it is linked below on the product page. You can sign up on there, put your email in, and we will notify you first thing it arrives back in stock and don't miss out. I hope that helped you discover what products of mine are best for you or help you discover what kind of products you should look for on the market. I do say mine are the best because I did create them and I wouldn't have created anything less than the best, but totally your decision. I'm not forcing you to buy anything. I don't want this to seem like an infomercial. I really did just want to help you out. That concludes that. Oh, okay. We went over so much today, guys. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you finally discovered what hair type you have and you can finally tell your hairdresser or your friends, you know, I have low density actually and I have thick hair. Um, Yeah, I know it's not a big deal, baby. Oh, I also have a normal scalp apparently. That's my goal for this video and I hope we accomplished that. <laughs> if you guys aren't already subscribed, please, God, Damn, do it for me. Click the other icon, the bell icon. Yeah, do that too, um, to get notified when I post a video. Make sure you follow me everywhere else. I am like literally everywhere at all times. I'm not tired, who said that? Just follow me everywhere else. If you guys would like to text me, here is my number. Yes, it is an actual number that I get to actually see your text messages and I can actually answer you guys. So I will be answering some of you guys. If you text me, you'll also be notified whenever I post a new video and such. If you guys would like to shop X Mono Hair, check it out, it's linked below at xmonohair.com or you can head to our Instagram at xmonohair to check out everything we offer. Today's Instagram shout out is Elena. Elena basically said that she uh, colored her hair blonde a few years ago and this is what it looks like and she said that her hair fried off you know it, it was bad she definitely regrets it a little bit and chunks of her hair were falling out and it was really bad I'm so sorry that happened to you um now her hair is dark again and it looks like this and she wanted to know if she should go back to that blonde picture Elena just do the blonde again but if your hair is compromised which you'll learn from this video if it is or not don't do it because your hair is gonna fall out again and I don't want that for you I hope that helped Elena I can't wait to see what you end up doing that that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.